Okay, record. Okay, so calculus two. Oh, by the way, if you if you feel you are sleepy, you want to sleep or or slide, maybe five minutes, ten minutes. That's okay in my class. Okay. So calculus two, we will deal with the. Uh, so if calculus one is single variable calculus, then the calculus two is, this is multi-variable calculus, okay? Which means, okay, which means that in calculus one, you are dealing with one, one variable, one variable. Usually we are dealing with x, okay? So this is about x, f of x, right? We're dealing with the ddx and so on. And if we deal with more than one, what we are, what we have done in calculus one is we are dealing with implicit. That's the method that we are using in the last semester, right? So we are dealing if more than one, we can do implicit. But in calculus two, in multivariable, we are dealing with at least two, at least two, or maximum three, okay? because that is uh, usually the, the, the most cases that is easy to be described in, in uh, graph or or, or, uh, or equations. So we will have a function that has two variables. And we will learn that we don't need the implicit. We can directly do the partial derivative, but this is what we will learn later on, okay? Okay, so to begin with, for calculus two, we learn that we have more than one variable. That's why we start the first chapter in calculus two with chapter 10, which is the parametric equation. Is I think a good way to approach uh, the multivariable. So chapter ten. This is the parametric equations. If you have a curve, okay, let's say you have this curve C, <coughs> this curve C, and if you ignore this, uh, that is, this is parametric, if you ignore this, if you imagine this is S, a function of X, only X, this is impossible to be a function, right? Because if you have a vertical line that has more than one point, then it's, it's not a function. So, so we have a third variable that is defined as uh, t. Okay. So let me let me write some uh, just uh, notes. So suppose x and y are both given as uh, functions of third variable t, we call this a, a parameter. And we have x and we have y. And we call this a parametric equations. Okay. So, 
Usually, if you remember, uh, I think slightly, or maybe some some physics problem in uh, in motions trajectory. Sometimes they mention also uh, similar with the, with this, like the distance, velocity, and they include also t and using some kind of similar to this problem. So you can imagine x and y is uh, distance or position, and t is like a time, the time traveling, how 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 much distance the 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 object is traveling or trajectory. Uh, projections. Okay. So you can also give some uh, similar uh, reference okay, to, to physics. I think it's also uh, easy to to be in uh, your mind with the concept okay. and how uh, the movement, like you throw a ball, you have uh, distance, you have time, right? Okay, so that's the parametric equations. So as the t or the parameter varies, if you have different t, maybe t starts 0, 1, or maybe start from negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on, the x and y also change. Uh, it changes based on their equations, right? So we can have the positions. based on this parametric. So we can interpret, can be interpreted. Can be interpreted as a position. Of a moving object at time t. Okay, to give you slightly example, a simple example that is easy to follow. Let me just give you just as simple functions for parametric. <coughs> and we can set up t uh, from maybe negative two uh, to maybe four. Okay, we can set up like that. And at, at every t, we can have different positions, right? Different x, y, different uh, points. So when we plug in, this is going to be the graph, right? If you see uh, uh, how the graph of the parametric, you see that it has the direction. Right? It has the direction. It's based on how d is uh, varies from the lowest value to highest highest one, okay? and it is restricted from this negative two to four. Okay? But if you look clearly, you see that a parabola. Right? You see a parabola. So actually, from these two uh, parametric equations for x and y, you can also eliminate the t, eliminate the parametric, or the parameter, and we can set up the, the parabola that we have observed here. Right? That's also one way to, to, uh, to look at. Okay? And sometimes it's also helpful if you want to uh, combine this with the calculus and you want to know maybe what's the derivative of this graph, okay? So, we can set up t is y minus 1, and we can have x 
and, and practically this will be the parabola. That is y squared, right? Y squared. And this is in in the, in the terms. It's called the eliminating the parameter. And of course, if you chase the restrictions for the parameter, you can also cut the, uh, the graph or maybe extend it the graph. Okay? That's it. So maybe if you want to maybe stop or maybe just evaluate from negative 1 to 3, so you can erase this part. So you can do uh, some different, with different, different restrictions. With different parameter. Okay. Uh, okay. I think I can go to the next slide. So, basically, the first part in our calculus two. Moving up too, too fast, it's quite slow, so the, lear the learning curve will be expected to be uh, rising up when we we are at least going to have the polar, calculus in polar. I think that will be um, a little bit difficult because you need to have a different perspective because you are changing the x, y to radius and theta. And it's sometimes uh, if you are not familiar with the uh, polar, it's, it will be a little bit difficult. And then after that, the sequence series, I think still okay, but after the chapter 14, it, the, the steep, the learning curve will be very, very steep. So, uh, yeah, I hope you can um, you can still uh, focus on the uh, chapters. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is we can also uh, look on if we have the parameter cos t and sine t and we can set up t maybe from 0 to 2 pi of course if you look on this and you're thinking on graphing the the uh, cos and sine, you will see that it will be a circle, right? A circle, So we can observe this in terms of uh, of the circle equations, okay?
So it's a circle with radius 1. If we change the t, uh, maybe we can change to be to 2t and this will be the same. Uh, this will be, if you see the change here, if you want to change this part with 2t, the Gretsch, it should be the same, right? It should be the same circle, okay? So that's also uh, one note to, to think. Okay, I think several sections. Uh, okay. okay, if you have x equals sine t and y also sine, but it's sine squared t, what will be the, uh, the graph? If you look at this sine t is x, so it's, it's practically that basically we can set up this to be just x squared, right? Okay. But, but the sine, it has minimum value and maximum value, right? Which is one. So the The x is from negative one to one. So it's a parabola, just a simple parabola, y equal x squared, but it has some restrictions on the x. So we can think this is a direction or the direction is going back forward, going forward and backward. Okay, this is just to note that okay. when you're dealing with parametry, you need to remember how is your t will be varied. If, if the t has a minimum value or maximum value, you need to, to, to mention that and maybe make a cut on your graph to erase the part that is not uh, included in the equations. Okay, okay the other one is Skip that. Okay, I think the last one I will go through. Okay, uh, the next case that is uh, still related to parametric. Okay. This is clear. There are three circles here. So imagine the circle, so look at the, the very left here. Imagine the circle is circling, circling. Okay. And this is the second, uh, it's the same circle. So it's moved <coughs> from this, this, and this, okay? Okay, so if we set up, okay, if we set up, the point that is on the ground, which is this point, we call this point, let's say P. Okay, of course, this will be uh, circling. So it will be move and 
from 1 to 2, right? And also, imagine the point P also change positions, right? Change positions, and probably maybe around here, okay, or around here. Maybe around here, this will be P. It's circling around. And then maybe at the end, for this third phase, it will be maybe around here, the P. Okay. And if you connect all this point, Not only just this tree, but all the possibility when the circle is moving. If you connect all the points, it will be like that. Okay. So if I draw this, so okay, probably like that. Okay. And then if the circle moves once one more time, it will be the same, the same pattern. This is the red line we call the cycloid. It's, it's quite difficult to explain in words, but I think in, in the picture it's, 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 uh, it's easier to explain in words, right? That's cycloid. And then what we are going to do now is we need to observe what is actually our P in terms of a parameter. So we need to know the parameter P. Okay. Okay, let's say we have uh, our our circle. Maybe let me make it a little bit bigger so that it should be easier to follow. Let's say the P is here, okay, around that point. Uh, maybe here. Maybe like that. And let's note some important point. Let's say this is a center. The center. And this will be the radius. Okay. And let's say the, the ground point here is D and the origin is O okay. okay what we are going to do is we want to identify we want to identify this point B To identify, I will set up this uh, distance as x and y. So, so that will be our objectives, our goals to find that. So find y and x. Okay. And to help our identifications, I will set up this line here and take this as a point Q. Okay. So this will be a right triangle. So the, the, the objective here is to identify our cycloid position, as cycloid points, as cycloid points. So 
but basically what is x and what is y. That's, that's a big question here. If we have an angle theta on, on this angle here, between the radius and this, so these two radius, okay. okay. Then I think, I think for y, it's not too difficult, right? Y is the radius, okay, minus this, right? And this QC we can have, help. we can have from the theta, right? Okay. So we can write for y. We can write y is tc minus qc. tc is our radius, circle radius. And qc is our r cosine theta, right? Okay. So we can write this y as r 1 minus cosine theta. Okay, now the problem here is what is x? Okay. The problem here is x. So x, if we look on the distance, this is OP minus the PQ, right? So we need to define what is OT. Okay. Any idea? Any idea how? OT? Any idea? So OT, if you look closely, this point P before it was here, where is P? It's from this O, right? It's moving, okay? So imagine P is still here. So all the side of the circle here, they are touching the ground, right? This is touching the OT. So from here, and imagine you are moving the whole sides here, is basically touching the OT. So the assumption that we are going to make is this OT will be the same as the arc of the circle. Okay. So that's the first assumption. So the arc of uh, PT will be the same at distance with the OT. The circle is, anyone remember? The arc, this, this, this length? Anyone remember? Who? Who say? Anyone say something? No? Okay, so this arc is r and multiply with theta, right? Okay? So OT will be just R theta. Okay, so X will be OT minus PQ. So this is the parametric for cycloid.
Okay. I think this will be the introduction to parametry. Then point one. Then point one. There are some additional examples if you read the textbook, like the some families of parametric, but I don't think it's essentials now. Uh, would like to get you to the calculus of the parametric first and learn more about the uh, later in partial derivatives. Okay. Okay, next is uh, maybe if you want to draw first here. I will share the recording uh, later, after our class, maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow. So every once in a while, we'll share the uh, recording files. Or if I have some additional video for you, I will also share share that video as well for uh, your study. And if you think you need some. Uh, additional tutors aside from your TA. I think you can also apply to to the student the learning center. Student learning center. So you can have maybe a group of six or maybe small group students. You can have some some tutors. I think you, you, how many students get in your group? Yeah, last semester. Eleven? Ten? Okay. 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 Okay, I think we can go to the calculus part for the parametric, okay? Because the, the first part is actually just introductions to the parametric. And it's basically not really that uh, new for you. So this will be the calculus with parametric curves. The basics still the same. Okay, Calculus is based on derivatives and integrations. So let's start with the, the derivatives. Okay. So suppose F and G are differentiable functions. And x is f t, y is g of t. Okay. Where y is also a differentiable function of x. So this is uh, the statement. From this statement, you say that x, it has function of t. y also has a function of t. So we can have t as the variable. But then y itself, it's also a function of x. Okay? It has uh, relations. So all three have to has relations. Okay. If you remember the chain rule, if we want to look on what is the tangents, the slope dy over dx, right? We can start with the the chain rule. Okay. So the chain rule will give 
a connections that is dy over dt is equal with this, right? Okay. And it is pretty obvious, right? Pretty obvious. But because, okay, what we want to know is we want to know the tangent of this. So basically, the question is still the same from last semester. That is, we want to know the slope and then the tangent line. Okay. So the question is still the same that we are going to evaluate. We are going to evaluate this. That's the goal, the objective. Okay. This is the tangent or uh, slope. So the tangent, we can write, this is dy over dt divided by dx over dt. parametric equations here, x and y, okay. x is function of t, y is function of p. Actually, to get into the, the tangent, dy over dx, you have, in official way, you have two methods. Okay. First one is eliminate the parameter. You get the whole functions with uh, y is equal to uh, function of x. You can derive like usual in calculus one. Or you can directly derive through this statement here, the equation. So you can derive based on dy over dt and dx over dt directly. Okay. Sometimes if the equation is not too complicated, you can eliminate the parameter and you can derive easily. But if not, then you can just go this way. Okay, this should be the denominator should not be equal to zero. So this is the first and uh, first statement. Okay, let me give you a quick example. Okay, let me give you a quick example maybe here. If x have a functions, a parametric equations, t squared minus 2t, y is t plus 1. Okay, this is t plus 1. Uh, find uh, the slope or divide the x at t equal 4.
Okay. We can do several ways, at least two, at least two ways. First, if you want to eliminate the parameter, you can have this uh, y minus one, and you can have uh, y minus one squared minus two y minus one, and then having the x equals something like that. And you can do the implicit differentiations. Okay. You can do implicit. And then you can have your dy dx later on, okay? But if we are doing the directly for the parametric, then dy dx is basically dy over dt, dx over dt. This is one divided by two t minus two. And at t equal four, this will be one over six. Let me give you another example, and it, it, it will be uh, a little bit reviewing the calculus parts on last semester. Another example. X is t squared and y is t cubed minus uh, 3t. Um, show that the curve has two tangents at three zero and find equations. So we can directly write dy over dx and then precisely write down the equations. So this is dy over dx. And we need to find at which t. So we can find the t from this statement here at the three zero. So we'll notice that so when x is equal three, then the t squared is uh, the t will be plus minus squared of three. Okay. And in both cases, it's also taking the zero, right? So slope at t plus minus squared of three, we can take to our equations. So 3t squared minus 3 so it will have two answers. The first one is positive squared of 3, the second one is negative squared of 3. So the equation of the tangent line, let me write here, so equations of tangent line is some review. You have two equations. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's too easy, right? Okay, find uh, points on the curve. where tangent is uh, horizontal or vertical. Okay, so horizontal tangent, vertical tangent, I hope still remember the, at least the terms, okay, the terms. Horizontal tangent is like this, right? So imagine you have the if you have this the curve like if you have this curve like this, okay, then you have changes in slope, right? That that slope, and then somehow it reaches this one. So the slope is positive but decreasing, right? But still positive but it's decreasing up until reaching zero, and then. This is negative slope, right? And keep increasing. So here, this is, we call that the, the gradient is zero, right? Or dy over dx is zero. This, this tangent is zero, okay? That's the horizontal tangent. How about the vertical tangent? The, ver the vertical tangent, if you remember that, okay, the reciprocal or, uh, or uh, the tangent x graph, it will reach to an um, uh, infinity point, right? And in, in calculus one, you re remember that you have the asymptote, right? Asymptote. So we can actually say that it's, it's actually, if we are trying to approach that with limit, we can call this uh, similar to what we are doing in the vertical tangent. Okay? But of course, it will be a little bit difficult to, to define, right? Because it's actually having an infinite infinite value. Okay, did you get my point? Like if you have here, this is positive. But what about really, really vertical? So it's, it has really highest value of the tangent or the slope, right? Of course, it's, it's, it's difficult to transcribe in, in words and define unless we are using limits. Unless we are using limits that we can define and maybe we are writing as asymptote. Okay, I hope you don't get minor of that. But at least this is what it means by a vertical tangent. However, however, it's, it, it's a difficult problem in calculus one. However, in parametric, we can draw all the possibility. We can draw the horizontal tangent and vertical tangent because we can have a circular, we can have a random, random graph easily because we have third variable t, okay? That's one, one thing that is benefit, beneficial from parametric. So, if you want to find the points where the tangent is horizontal or vertical, this is when it's horizontal, right? It's horizontal. Which means that the total value of the slope of dy over dx, it should be zero. But when we we are in a parametric world or in parametric equations if we use this dy over dt and dx over dt to have zero value we should have this zero and this should not be a zero okay So that the statement is true, okay? And then we can have our dy over dt, which is we can get from uh, the 
the equation 3t squared minus 3, this should be 0. And then we get that this is perfectly t squared equal 1, or t is plus minus 1. And if we take on the uh, points of x and y, we are going to have these two particular points. Okay, now that is the horizontal. Okay, so this is horizontal tangent. Okay, let me write here. This is horizontal. Now, if we are going to look at the vertical tangent, which is now possible in parametric, okay, because in single variable calculus, we are not. We, it's not possible unless using limits and you have the asymptote, right? So this should be dy, dy, dy over dx. It should be, let me write completely. To make the definitions true for the vertical tangent, then this should not be zero, and this should be zero. So we, we will have a highest value as, as, as much as possible. Okay. So we know that the, the dx over dt is 2t. And dx over dt should be equal to zero, so t is zero. And the only corresponding point for this one is just 0 and 0, if you check to x and y parameter, okay, parametric equations. If you time to to write, maybe uh, think something from here. So at the three zero, the previous question, you have two slope, right? You have two slope. So the curve seems to be circling around, at least at least circling around because it's have two tangents at one point, and it has two horizontal, and it has a vertical, okay? So you can actually sketch the graph using this uh, method, checking the horizontal tangent, checking the vertical tangent, checking whether the function has a two tangent at one point, or maybe uh, it is uh, circling around, and without any uh, having any point that has two tangents, and it can be possible as well. Okay, now if you want to draw completely what it's look like, okay, let me note this as the. Zero, 0, which is, I think it will be like this. This has the vertical tangent. Let me just write the vertical tangent first. This is the vertical tangent. And then here is 1 and 2. This is 1 and negative 2, the, the horizontal tangent. So it will be having like this. And then at the at the three zero, it has two tangent like that. Okay. 
if you would like to check point by point to completely redraw what this looks like okay, we can have this at least like that we start from the arrow start from here So we can have that as well. So concavity. So if we want to check whether this the con it's concave upwards or concave downwards, what we are going to do? What we are going to check? Now this is a little bit tricky part okay, on the parametric. Okay. If the dy dx is dy over dt over dx over dt, what will be the second derivative? Okay, if for example in these terms in our question here, this is equal 3t squared minus 3 divided by 2t. What will be the second derivative? Anyone? Sometimes, uh, others didn't make mistakes. If you write down, probably this will be 6t and 2. Is it? No? Okay. So careful, okay, careful. You need to go back to definitions. What is the definitions? The definitions is that these two function x, y, both are functions of t, but y itself is function of x. Okay. So if you going to derive directly this with respect to t, both of them, you are basically broken this rule. So to have a good structure way or proper way to derive, let's just write the first derivative. Okay? Let's just write the first derivative. Just write here. And we are going to derive this. Now, this is a proper way to 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 write down the derivative. And when we are going to do like this, then if we are going to initiate the chain rule with the dp, then we can write ddt of dy dx. over dx over dt. Now this way, it will be uh, a proper way and safe to, to derive. Okay. Because basically, what we did before, we did here, okay. Let me write to, 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 for you to get uh, a better perspective. So this is basically, we are saying that d, d over dt is y. 
Okay? Is this more clear? Okay. It's actually what's happening on the chain rule. Okay? But when you derive the second lead, the second time, what you're going to change is your y change to its first root. Okay? okay? Clear? Okay. I think this is, I think, more visually more understandable. Okay. Aside from if you just read the textbook and just see this, okay, what's, what's so important about this. But if you look here, it's pretty much obvious. What you did is, this changing the y with u over the x, and your steps is clear and structured okay, in a proper way to, to derive. Okay, now if we want to calculate the example here, then we can write down the calculations. The x over t is just two t, so we're gonna write like that. So we are going to have some quotient rule for the top equations. Okay. So it should be four t squared divided by two t. So this part here will be sixty twelve t squared. So it should be 60 squared plus 6. And we can write this as 3t squared plus 3. So 8, 8, 4. 4, okay. And how to how to know the concavity? We can have some line numbers here. And we are going to check our our equations here. 3t squared plus 3 for t cubed. Okay. Of course we don't want this to be zero, right? So probably that will be one terms. And maybe there's something wrong here, I think. So I think it's, it's only zero that is imported from the equations. So we can write line number zero. And we can check uh, when, when it is greater than zero, it should be a positive, right? And when it's less than zero, the only part that is significant is just this one. Okay. It can be positive or negative, right? Depends on the t. So this will be positive, this should be negative. So we can write down curve is concave upwards. when t is greater zero and curve is concave downwards 
when t is less zero. And, and we can have this concavity to help sketching the graph. The previous graph is just checking trial and error, but this is the more valid because you have the concave uh, approach or the concavity approach. Okay, if we check, just checking the graphs here. This is, if we take notes, this is at t negative one, and this is t equal one. And this is t equal zero. So it's precisely this negative, right? It's downwards and this is upward. This is uh, positive. Okay. And so essential in parametric aside from the how to measure the slope, the tangent, uh, measure the concavity. Also at the graph you need to have first its direction and first you need also to mention t because now this is our parameter. Okay, and probably last example, and maybe um, will not be finished yet. We have a cycloid. Find tangent uh, at point where theta is uh, pi over three. And at what points is tangent uh, horizontal? or vertical. So at this parametry for cycloid the one that changes is the theta, because the radius is fixed, right? So if you remember the case, it's just like a, like a, like higher, like a, like your bicycle. Of course, the radius is not changing. Right? So the parametric will be the theta. Okay? So we will have the, uh, the dx over the theta, and we will have the dy over the theta, right? 
And similar with with the previous cases, what we are going to do is we are going to have the dy over dx, and we are just changing t with theta. So t can be any variables, okay? So one minus cos theta, differentiate become multiply with minus and it's sine. So it would be R sine theta. R is just a fixed number, it's a constant, just a constant. And dx will be, theta will be one, and then minus sine will be minus cos sine. You derive that. So it will be R one minus cos sine theta. And you can cancel this r and you have sine theta over one minus cos theta and when the theta is equal pi over three then we have x uh, let me just calculate this first This will be okay. so the slope is square root of three and x is we can plug in just pi over three this will be pi over three minus square root of three divided by two. Y will be also the same. This will be one minus cos pi over three. Uh, we can have, this is just half, so it's the R over two. And we can have the slope with this, okay? The slope will be, so the slope or the equations will be Y minus R2 equals square root of three x minus the whole x there. Thank you.